Hi everyone, Tim the Plain Man here and welcome to Plain Time. Well, let's call this one VT Bird Brains Edition. These boys is going to be my brain trust. This is about the brains of the new VT Bird build that I'm just getting started on. If you haven't seen my unboxing, check it out here. So what I want to do before I talk, before I get in and start building everything into the plane is talk about what is going to be the brains of this whole enterprise. The brains trust. This is the BT Bird Brains Trust. So what I have here, and you've seen this before and I have some other videos about it as well, is the Zealot H743 Ardu Pilot flight controller. Very nice flight controller, I like it a lot. I've used it on several of my planes. The second thing I have here is a Raspberry Pi 2W. A Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. I've tried a Raspberry Pi Zero because I want to keep it small in a plane like this. And it, the Raspberry Pi Zero can't quite keep up. Um, it tends, for example, it takes about a minute to boot, uh, an awful long time. This Raspberry Pi 2 Zero 2, though, is um, got a more powerful CPU, um, more memory. It's still kind of data technology, but it does very well with keeping up with the things that I want to put on it, and I'll talk about that in a second. So what I have done here is I've connected a UART, unfortunately, have to use a UART it seems. Uh, I don't know, I might want to try USB, but uh, recommendations are to use a UART, and it does work, albeit, you know, at serial communication speeds but um, like your old dial-up modems from the 1990s, but nevertheless, um, and by the way, with lots of errors, really annoys me big time that it seems acceptable to, that between two devices connected together like this, that you can accept serial communication with uh, um, just, I don't know, a 10% error rate, it's kind of crazy. Anyway, this is what I'm going to use for now. So what I have, I've connected a UART and it'll be set up with Mavlink 2 output on serial port 2. That's connected to the UART input on the Raspberry Pi 02W. I'll put the pinouts on the screen just to show you. And what I have here is a LTE mobile data stick. And this one happens to be an Alcatel uh, link key, I think it's called. And all I've done is just simply plug that into the USB port here. It seems to be the easiest way to do it. I've tried using a Raspberry Pi hat uh, and uh, no end of trouble getting it to work, whereas this is simple and it works. So I'm going with simple and it works. I like that. And then as a result of having a hat here, I have uh, all the outputs from the Raspberry Pi. It has a screen, I can plug in an HDMI screen, it has um, USB ports, USB-C, and I also have an Ethernet port right here on the Raspberry Pi. So that Ethernet port hopefully will enable me to connect my CEA8 mini camera and that will come later. I'll get it in the air first before I start messing with that part, but that gives me the ability to do that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll just quickly show you. Oh, by the way, I love this board. The VT Bird comes with this mounting board for the flight controller, and it's designed to screw, to lift in and out with four screws. I usually build this kind of thing myself. I build a mounting board and mount my flight controller to it. Didn't have to do that in this case, it, it's here. And so I put double-sided tape between the Raspberry Pi and the board, and double-sided tape between the flight controller and the Raspberry Pi. That's nice and solid, but also um, vibration resistant, shall we say. And that will basically screw in nice and cleanly there. 
enable me to get lots of separation between here and my power module which will go in the middle and the battery and all that kind of thing that's going to go at the front and interestingly the GPS will mount here at the rear. So let's take a look at the, the architecture of how the Raspberry, the flight controller connects to the Raspberry Pi and how I use my LTE data stick to connect to two things. One is I'll be enabling direct connection to a mission planner or Q ground control or map proxy to the flight controller via tail scale as a, a VPN. But also, and one of my favorite parts of this is I'm running Artipilot Cloud, AKA Drone Engage on this Raspberry Pi. So Drone Engage is a very interesting technology from the Arctic Pilot. Uh, it's open source technology and Mohamed Hefne um, is kind of the lead developer on it and does an amazing job with coming up with uh, a really nice clean architecture for software that basically enables the Raspberry Pi to connect to the cloud in an internet of things uh, approach so we can have basically things connecting to other things. And so we've got this connecting to this and this will connect to the cloud. And then technically people can connect into the cloud or, uh, or you can write scripts that drive this from the cloud as well. But one of the best things about this uh, drone engage cloud architecture is it's a very simple architecture on the board. It has two components, a Mavlink module and a communication module and then there will be a camera module. I'm not using the camera module yet. The communication module calls out to the cloud. This is excellent for security. You know, the last thing you want to have is to be that person who gets their drone hacked because you opened up a Raspberry Pi to the cloud and somebody dialed into it, found the link, found the port and took over. Well, with Arctic Pilot Cloud and uh, Drone Engage, it doesn't work that way. This device calls out to the cloud. There is no open port for calling in. And that's a, that's a really good architecture that a lot of well-designed de uh, applications use these days to enable um, secure software to run in secure environments inside behind multiple layers of firewalls, uh, but still enable access to specific uh, endpoint specific software up on the cloud. So this can call out to the cloud and here you have the drone engage web client that will enable and see here it says no devices online right now but when I turn this on and plug it in it'll come live and I'll have a separate video about that. It will automatically call out connect to the cloud and you will have a browser based interface as another alternative for basic uh, ground control station um, functionality to control the drone and drone engage enables easy management of multiple devices, multiple uh, planes, drones, subs, rovers, whatever it is with autopilot. And so if multiple devices connect, they get listed uh, right here and you can click on each one and you can arm each one or not disarm or, or switch the modes or you can disable all that functionality and make it read only from the web so that you have a viewer. It deserves a whole video on its own so I don't want to say too much more about it just to say that Drone Engage running on here will enable a whole world of capabilities for being able to manage the drone in flight and Alternatively, and the reason why I've done my architecture the way I've done it, and so we're going to get into that now, is so that I also have um, a alternative mechanisms. And we'll see that too. And of course, I'm also going to have a regular radio receiver transmitter connection to the flight controller. Probably going to be Crossfire, I think. I'm looking at Crossfire. It has some interesting options. I have used Express LRS mostly up to now and it, it is possible that I may still go with Express LRS. I haven't locked that in yet. So basic transmitter control of the plane will be a regular my TX16S with either Express LRS or Crossfire 
but other options for communicating with the plane, especially when it flies <coughs> a long distance away, or more importantly, actually, especially with um, live views of the camera and that kind of thing when I finally get to the point of uh, wiring up the camera. So uh, have a look at this. This is, I don't know, I think this is kind of interesting. See what you think. What we have to start with is we have our Geotech Zealot H743 uh, RD Pilot Flight Controller. Could be any RD Pilot Flight Controller really and doesn't really technically even require an H743. I think the basic Navlink capabilities are in some of the lower end uh, flight controllers but honestly I don't see the point. H743 is already years old technology. I don't know why I would go even further back. Anyway, RD Pilot Flight Controller. What we have next is we have a connection, which could be a UART, could be USB, and I would love it if I could use Ethernet to connect to a Raspberry Pi 02W that is, you know, as you saw, the second um, device um, directly connected, and I'm using a UART. On that Raspberry Pi, I'm running a Mavlink connection to a piece of software called Mav P2P. I'll put the link in the description. There are many other alternatives. Uh, Mav Router is another good one. I find Mav P2P nice and simple and clean for what I'm trying to do here. Basic connection. It could just as easily be, well, you could use Mav Proxy. I, I have tried Mav Proxy, and Mav Proxy is not the greatest in terms of performance running on Python, etc. I found that on a Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, Map Proxy can basically grind it into the ground. It can run on a, a 0 to 2, but you know what? With Map P2P, it uses only a few percentage points of the CPU. So uh, I don't understand the benefit. Um, you're not actually going to be doing ground control work on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it will all happen through the connections to the other things. So, so Map P2P is the only thing that connects through the USB to the flight controller. Then I run a VPN. I run Tailscale, there are others like Zero Tier. I think Tailscale personally, I've, I've tried some of the others. I, I find Tailscale very nice. It, um, it has the ability to have named devices, really clean interface, really quite nice. The performance is reasonably good. So, uh, but it could be any VPN and the tail scale is not required, it's optional, if I'm going to run Drone Engage. Now I run tail scale because, well, I, I kind of like the idea of being able to access the, the device uh, directly. I can SSH to my Raspberry Pi if I need to from anywhere uh, via tail scale from my desk, from my um, workstation and that gives me access to be able to manage the device, especially when I have it on the bench. It's actually kind of handy. Tail scale provides secure access. It's a private network. No one else can connect to the device through the VPN. And because most of the time I'm not actually using it when I'm using Drone Engage, the traffic is low, the, tra the bandwidth is low, and the impact on the CPU is low. There's really little uh, issue here. and uh, most of the real connection goes through Drone Engage. The second thing we have here is Drone Engage or Ardu Pilot Cloud. So Ardu Pilot Cloud runs two services that, and I'll show you the install, uh, the link to the install with uh, Drone Engage on the Ardu Pilot website. There's a communication service and a Mavlink service. The Mavlink service can be configured to connect direct to the flight controller. But I'm not doing that because I want that abstraction in there that enables me to have both tail scale and drone engage as options. So I connect Mavlink to connect to Mav P2P via UDP on the host. Because it's UDP, it'll be a direct connection, it's low overhead, and there will be no loss. So that works nicely. The Mavlink service connects to the communication service. And then I have, as I showed you, I've got an LTE data stick. Now I can also use Wi-Fi, and when I'm running on the bench, I typically have the Wi-Fi enabled on the Raspberry Pi, and then the LTE data stick is for when it's out of the field or the plane's flying around. 
So either way is an option and you know potentially other data communication mechanisms could be used as well. This connects over the internet. And the way again that, that we provide security here, Tailscale provides a VPN, a virtual private network. So the only way to access that uh, sh command shell prompt on the device is from someone else who is a, a device that is a member of my private network. You can't do it any other way. And Drone Engage provides that outgoing connection through to the Drone Artipilot Cloud web client, which runs on cloud.artipilot.org. And there's a cloud server, and uh, the cloud server then provides access to the web client. Now you can use any ground station you want with this approach, and I have used all of the above. So I can have Mission Planner, Q Ground Control, or Mav Proxy connecting via tail scale and Mav P2P to my Artipilot flight controller. And I can have any browser that I like running cloud.artipilot.org at port 8001. And that communicates, as I mentioned before, the one-way communication outbound from the communication service provides the access that gives a complete view of the plane, where it is, and the ability to do things like change modes and, and set other settings. And that Artipilot Cloud Communication Service option has a, uh, a throttling mechanism. So if for whatever reason your bandwidth, you have bandwidth issues, there's, uh, there's problems with the bandwidth, you can actually turn down the, the, the level of messages uh, and the frequency of messages that actually go out through that link. And that is also configurable on the, uh, on the device itself as to what level two, level one, level zero mean in terms of which messages get sent and what frequency they get sent. In addition, there could be a camera communicate, a camera service running on here as well that would provide uh, the web view can have a view of the camera, um, RTSP uh, feed, data feed from a camera, which could be a Raspberry Pi camera, for example, on the plane. And that is also available in the Artipilot web client, I should say. So uh, that's, that's the architecture. It's the, the diagram seems a little busy, but if, as you can see, if we build it up, it's fairly simple. Uh, Artipilot device, Raspberry Pi, and uh, Artipilot Cloud. On the Raspberry Pi, Mav P2P, tail scale, and drone a gauge. And uh, that gives us multiple connection points, multiple uh, alternative paths to communicate with the vehicle. And drone engage, as I mentioned before, provides the ability to have to connect and display multiple vehicles and manage multiple vehicles from a remote location on using a simple web interface, which is a, a very good architecture. I, I'll just say it like that, a very good architecture. So that's the brains. This is the brains trust that will drive this plane. These boys is gonna be my brain trust. What's that mean, Everett? The army's in you, me, and Tommy are going to be there. Power behind the throne, so to speak. Oh, okay. And it's going to be very interesting getting it in the air. Tim the Plane Man, over and out.